Great. Thank you, Your Worship. The administration is recommending tonight that the city negotiate terms for an agreement with Loris Recycle for the provision of curbside recycling services for single family residents in Saskatoon. As you're well aware, this recycling file has been underway for a long time. And for the past two years, both council and administration have made this initiative a priority. We started two years ago with a thorough public consultation process which saw many hundreds of people come out and voice their opinions on the various options being considered. We also conducted a statistically relevant survey to get some insight into what citizens were uh, looking for in the expanded recycling program. And after hearing from citizens, council resolved to proceed with a citywide curbside collection program for recyclables. We then started working through the details of how to procure this service. And we resolved that the best way to ensure the highest quality service was to issue a request for proposals or RFP. Uh, now you'll recall the RFP was the subject of much discussion and debate. Uh, some examples, uh, one time we brought forward a proposal to split the city into four zones that was later dropped. Uh, we had considered um, accepting bids only from proponents who were bidding both collection and processing. That was changed so that we would accept bids from processors separately from collectors. Uh, glass was in, then it was out, then it was in again and it ended up being in uh, with the provision that, in, that uh, it did not contaminate any paper destined for cosmopolitan industries. And finally, on November 7th of last year, Council approved the final request for proposals and, and asked the administration to proceed with procuring a contractor or contractors to provide the service. And these RFPs reflected what mattered to Council. Things like environmental stewardship, ensuring that Cosmopolitan in Industries continues to get the same tonnage of paper every year that it does now. And of course, the way the service is provided to citizens was a significant part of the evaluation process. Um, you were looking for the best value, money for, best value for money solution, not just the cheapest solution. Um, in the end, the points awarded for the quality of the service provided uh, comprised 65% of the evaluation criteria, and the remaining 35% of points went to the price. If, if it were only about price, not about quality of service, it would have been a simple tender. Uh, a simple tender, is, as the city solicitor advised, are won or lost by a penny. Uh, RFPs, completely different scenario. Uh, quality of service is combined with price to get value. The administration issued the RFPs in December of last year. They closed on February 23rd of this year. And since that time, the evaluation committee made up of Brenda Wallace, myself, John Smith from EXP Consulting, and Linda Andel from Corporate Services Department have evaluated all of the proposals. We evaluated them exactly as per the process approved by Council on November 7th and determined that the highest scoring proposal was a combined proposal from Loris Recycle. There was an in independent auditor uh, who evaluated every step of the process. Um, now, I'll read a uh, quote from the auditor's report, and the report is on the city's website and it's in your package tonight. The auditor concluded that the procurement process had been, has been conducted in accordance with industry best practices. The outcome has been achieved through processes that are visible, defensible, and auditable. Uh, Your Worship, the, the program that has been uh, proposed by Loris Recycle is, will be one of the most cost-effective, comprehensive curbside and recycling programs in the nation. You will recall that uh, early on in the process, the administration had estimated that the cost to provide a curbside collection program was between $7 and $11 per month. That was our initial estimate. That was based on a survey of, of uh, municipalities throughout Canada. The price submitted by Loris Recycle works out to $3.83 per month in 2012. Now by 2019, that's the seven year term of the contract, that price increases to about $4.56 per month. 
per household per month. And that's just over a little bit more, that is a little bit more than half of the cost that the administration had estimated uh, back a year and a half or two ago. Um, now that's not all in, there are taxes to consider, there's uh, the, the education part that will be up to the administration, a portion of it up to the administration, and um, there will be the, the costs to administer the contract. So that's not the all-in cost, but we believe that the all-in cost will be in the low $4 per household per month range. Uh, now on Friday, just uh, there is a, a procedural matter I want to clear up just to make sure we're, there's a perfect clarity on, these, on this cost issue. On Friday, we did distribute a report, a, a supplemental report to the original report that was in the council package. In that report, we gave the total points and we gave the cost for the top three uh, proposals that we received. And just to be clear, the, the costs that we circulated were the net present value of the proposals, not the gross value of the contract. The net present value, uh, some bidders have high costs early, some bidders ramp up their costs later on in the contract. And when you account for inflation, the time value of money, and growth, uh, we were using net present value, we can bring back those projects, uh, all of those costs today and really do the apples to apples comparison. The gross project cost, so the approximate size of the contract, um, for example with Loris, um, would be a, about $25.525 million. And in contrast, the, the other number that we disclosed on, on Friday was the, uh, the, the uh, net present value of the Cosmo and the Emterra combined bid. So the apples to apples comparison or the gross value of that contract would be $24.463 million. So that difference is $1.06 million. So Your Worship, uh, Ms. Brenda Wallace is going to step you through some details of the RFP process and the evaluation and then we'll do our very best to answer your questions. Mr. Jorgens, go over that last paragraph again you were talking yep. about. Uh, Sure. Yep. Yeah. The uh, the numbers that we released in the supplemental report on Friday. Um, Which are those? Which ones are those you referring to? Right. On this one here, we've got three of them in about five emails. Okay. Thanks. Mike. Only five. The. Uh, yeah. So this is a report that was distributed uh, Friday. It was a supplemental part of the council package. Yeah. Number F. It is called F. Recycling request for proposals. Additional information. Yep. Additional detail. There was only one report that had uh, price. This is this is these are the only prices that we we've, we've circulated. So in the report that went out on Friday we gave the net present value of the proposals. So Loris, the number we gave on Friday was $22.552 million. Uh, that was the, their uh, combined bid. And then the, the, the other number that I uh, gave in contrast was the, uh, uh, the number for the Cosmo M Terra bid. So the net present value of the Cosmo M Terra bid was $21.510 million. Uh, the gross contract value would be $24.463 million. So there's uh, what I'm... Yep, $24.463. That was for the combined gross cost of the Cosmo slash M terabit. Yeah. The reason I wanted to go through this, the, the, com the, uh, the comparison is is the same, like the, the, the net present value is the number that drove the uh, uh, evaluation process and that was included in the, in the addendums that went out to the proponents, so that was, everybody understood that. The reason I wanted to highlight that tonight is I don't want anybody to be confused when we come back with a contract that is uh, larger than the numbers we gave in the report on, uh, on Friday. Apples to apples comparison are the numbers we gave on Friday the total gross value of the contract are those two numbers that I just gave. Mr. Jorgensen, on my sheet here that I have, it has rankings, Loris 22.552, Loris 23.208, 
and then Cosmo at 21.510. I, I don't see any 24 anywhere. Yep, Your Worship, I guess the numbers that I'm giving, the 25.525 aligns with ranking number one. So the gross value, what we're saying is we gave you one number, which was the net present value of the contract. The gross contract for the number one ranked bid is actually 24, uh, sorry, 25.525. So you could write that number beside yeah, okay. the 22.552. Yeah, yep. And then on the third bid, the Cosmo Mterra bid, the number in the report is 21.510. Right. And the number you could write beside that is 24.463. So that is the gross value of the contract. Okay. So the other ones were net, that's just total cost, and those were total net cost dollars then? Yeah, those were the net present value of the contract. Okay. So we can use a formula, uh, proven accounting uh, process to say it, it effectively lets us um, account for the time value of money. I'd, I'd rather have, for in the very most simple terms, I'd rather have a dollar today than a dollar in seven years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just I didn't see those numbers before. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Wallace. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Jorgensen, Your Worship, members of City Council. Tonight, administration did want to take some extra time to review both the recycling RFP evaluation process that's behind the results report, but also the additional detail report that, as Mr. Jorgensen alluded to, was distributed uh, late on Friday. There we go. <clears throat> There are two ways for the City of Saskatoon to buy things. One is through a tender and another is through a request for proposals. In this case, the RFP was selected as the procurement approach over a tender process. While tenders have very specific deliverables that allow the competitive bid process to focus on the lowest price, RFPs recognize sometimes cities uh, in pursuit of sustainability have other equally important objectives. Also in the case uh, of the recycling, curbside recycling program, we are procuring a service. Um, so things like customer interface, reliability of that service, education of customers about how to use the service, and response to inquiries and complaints definitely matter. Council reviewed and approved the RFP on November 7th. The principles um, that go beyond price highlighted by the RFPs are things like flexibility and outcomes. The collections and processing and marketing RFPs call for the delivery of service for a seven-year term. This matches the typical length of time to amortize the capital required to deliver the program, the trucks, the carts, and equipment at the material recovery facility. This approach to flexibility helps in two ways. It maximizes the opportunity for a variety of bidders to submit proposals irrespective of being large or small. And it avoids the potential creation of a monopoly, as in theory all potential bidders are on a level playing field at the start of each contract term. The RFPs also welcomed the expertise and innovation of bidders to indicate whether their program worked best as a single stream, a dual stream, or a modified version of either of these, meaning that glass has been removed. Collection methods could vary from bag to bins or rollout carts. Administration's research on this issue led us to believe that dual stream methods may provide the least cost processing, while single stream methods provide the least cost collection. In this six of one, half a dozen of the other scenario, where technology and education play such an important role, the city did not pre-select a collection method but rather let industry, who are in the best position to identify the collection method that best suits the design of their program, identify how their approach would achieve the outcomes articulated in the RFP. Performance outcomes were also outlined. These included efficiency, sustainability, convenience, and material diversion itself. And these were described in detail in the RFPs and the relative importance for collections and processing and marketing was indicated through the allocation of points. And not least of which, cost concerns were also addressed through this process. The budget for the residential curbside recycling program was set using lean but realistic costs based on research of programs locally and across the country. 
While most communities send out tenders with clear specifications for the delivery of a service that includes gross costs only and then attempt to gain financial benefits through revenue sharing agreements later, Saskatoon opted to factor in the fact that a recoverable resource with value is coming out of the end of this program right from day one. This net pricing approach to setting the budget has provided ratepayers with the most cost effective program in Canada and well below the cost that will be paid in neighbouring centres like Regina. Further, an affordability ceiling was built directly into the RFP. This ceiling was just that. Bidders submit on the basis of certainty and knew quite clearly that if their price proposal was even a dollar above the established budget, Council would consider its options and an award of contract was not guaranteed. This affordability ceiling was set in 2011 dollars and the net present value calculation was shared with bidders in an addendum for further clarity. In most RFPs released by the City, the points allocated for price are quite secondary, meaning a range of 20 to 25 percent of, of the points. In this case, to further emphasize the importance, the importance of prudence around price, 35 percent of the points were assigned to the financial score. And a financial score was assigned based on a formula provided to bidders in the RFPs. After being applied to the individual price submissions provided by bidders, the highest scoring proposals were matched up into a whole program. The financial score was then recalculated such that the lowest price bid as a whole program was assigned the new maximum points for price and the other prices compared to that new benchmark. Council approved the evaluation process and our reports tonight indicate the evaluation committee used the technical scoring matrix that's found in the RFPs, the financial scoring formula that was articulated in the RFPs, uh, followed the evaluation methodology also outlined in the RFPs. The committee was established by Council with representatives named. A probity audit was prepared um, ensuring the work of the committee in following the established process was not interfered with and the RFP outlined the negotiations and awards process including um, debriefs of unsuccessful bidders. So what were the steps in the evaluation process? We started out with confirming first the information that uh, was, were the mandatory requirements and to keep the accessibility of this economic opportunity available to large and small firms, uh, um, we kept that bar very low. There were three mandatory requirements. The first, that you submit on time. The second, that you provide a consent of surety or some kind of performance bond. And thirdly, that you provided a price proposal for the provision of unsorted fibre to Cosmo. After that, the evaluation committee completed the technical evaluation and this was done on a blind basis, meaning that all of the financial information was kept locked and secured by purchasing and away from the committee during this evaluation. Once the technical evaluation had been signed off, then the financial score formula was calculated. Individual submissions were categorized by type of service and then ranked. <coughs> The highest ranking individual submissions were matched up to make a whole program and so that turned into three whole programs that were available um, for us to rescore financially and those final scores with their prices are what was included in the additional detail report provided on Friday. We provided information about the dual stream, um, the highest scoring program, the single stream, highest scoring program and those proposals that were submitted as a whole program. Lastly, as I mentioned, we did the final score formula calculation again so that again, preference was given for the lowest um, price submission uh, looking at a whole recyclable program. And then the ranking was done by total points. The results of this process, though it was um, complex, uh, it, it did work very well and we were successful in attracting five companies as bidders. Because they were allowed to submit a collections only proposal, uh, a processing and marketing only proposal uh, or a whole um, program proposals, we did have 11 submissions. We had six submissions related to collections, three of which were single stream solutions and three of which were dual stream. 
We also received four processing and marketing uh, submissions, one of which was a single stream solution and three of which were dual stream solutions. And we received one whole program submission. In terms of receiving questions and concerns from bidders through this process, administration did host one introductory project meeting and welcomed written submissions from potential bidders. During this period, we did issue four addendums. The first was to respond to a concern that the bidders had about the consent of surety. Initially, the RFP had indicated that we were looking for 50% of the value of the entire contract all seven years. I think the, uh, um, we were very easily convinced that that would be a very costly endeavor for the city to carry and that really in terms of our interest, 50% of any one year is what we, we'd need um, in order to ensure the performance against this contract and that that would give us the time and the resources we need to find another um, program deliverer. The second addendum is answered questions coming out of that introductory meeting and any written submissions and included an, uh, an extension of the submission deadline. The third addendum uh, provided additional information on future growth projections and additional services, particularly for multi-unit dwellings. And the fourth addendum provided a tutorial on completing financial tables. Through this entire process, there was the only one, only one change, as I noted, and that was the, in response to the consent of surety concern. The results led us to selecting, uh, as a preferred proponent, Loris Recycle, who scored the highest uh, points through the evaluation process. It was their whole program submission that had the highest points. Their solution uh, suggests a 96-gallon rollout cart that would be collected on a bi-weekly basis. All recyclable materials would be placed in one container and delivered to their new local material recovery facility. The strengths of the proposal provided by Loris Recycle related to uh, their submission on the economic viability of the proposed program approach, quality control and assurance methods, uh, the, their plans for serving citizens through participation, and also the range of materials um, that were proposed to be recycled under the program. The next steps for the RFP take us to our recommendations in the first recycling report this evening, and that is to enter negotiations with our preferred proponent. Certainly the major elements are already defined in their submission. So what is left as negotiables are things like costs related to the city-led education program and whether our plans have any impact on the contractor details on reporting to ensure that what has been promised in the submission can be uh, accounted for through the contract of all seven years and ensure we have program performance. To talk about the Cosmo pricing provided because it was provided as a benchmark and certainly as the city honors its no harm commitment to Cosmo, we will ask for a sharp pencil on any tons that we actually need to procure from this program. We will also be talking about a risk or profit sharing in case of market failure or extreme profit taking. With the actual contract coming back to Council per the City Standards Procurement Practices. And with that, um, I welcome any questions anyone had about the report. Okay. Uh, Councillor Penner. Do you want to take questions now, Your Worship, or hear the speakers first? Uh, I think that we could perhaps hear from the, uh, the speakers first. <laughs> Okay. I'll, I'll wait then and ask my question after you worship. I just didn't know for sure which way you wanted to do it. Well, Councillor Lurie, you, you're... Uh, your uh, I would uh, prefer that we have some questions about this first before we hear from the speakers and quite frankly, uh, I would like to move uh, an amendment to the recommendations and uh, so I would like to be able to do that before we get into the uh, hearing the speakers so that people know what we're dealing with. Okay. Uh, Councillor Lurie, then, you said you have an amendment, so why don't you... But we have no one that has moved the recommendations at all yet. Moved by Councillor Hill. That's recommendations one and two. Is there a seconder? Councillor Lowen has seconded that. Okay, Councillor Laurier, you say that you wish to have a third recommendation. Yes, Your Worship, and I will be supporting the two recommendations, and I would ask that Council would also support 
my third recommendation because while I came here tonight to debate all the merits and everything, it occurred to me that uh, there's another more important thing that's happening in this community and that is a sense of controversy of will this decision cause the death of Cosmo Industries. And uh, I believe that my amendment will make it clear that this will not and uh, I will speak to it after I put it. The amendment is that the city honors its no harm clause to Cosmo by continuing to provide no less than the 7,800 tons of unsorted glass free paper to Cosmo Industries for the life term of this contract by entering into formal discussions and negotiations for such paper to be sourced from a combination of paper from multifamily residences, the paper available at the existing depots, and the city's own operationally generated recyclable waste paper with the intention of the city entering into a memorandum of understanding with Cosmo to be the service provider for recyclables generated from multifamily units. I'd like to put that amendment. Uh, okay. 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 Councilor Dunhauer. Do you want me to speak to it now or? Uh, yes. <laughs> Speak to it now because if we're going to go through questions and answers then, we'll deal with your amendment first of all. Well, I think that we can debate endlessly and we have for the last four or five years. We've debated the merits of single stream versus dual stream uh, and we have a scoring criteria that has resulted in this recommendation. I'll give it to you. Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, we've got a scoring criteria that's resulted in this recommendation for this uh, RFP. It's not a tender, it's an RFP as Ms. Wallace pointed out. Uh, but the debate seems to be coming down to are we going, is, are we going to support COSMO or not support COSMO? If we pass the recommendation for Loris, does that make us a business unfriendly city? Uh, all those kinds of debates were, are swirling around and quite frankly, this complicated matter has come down to this one, one issue and that is that this community is suffering needlessly in terms of a controversy that we can put to rest tonight by adopting my motion. Uh, we have to have, I believe, a spirit of compromise. We know that we will be generating a certain amount of paper from single family residences. But there is also a large amount of paper that will be coming from multifamily residences as well as the institutional paper such as the paper generated almost endlessly in City Hall. And we also have the we still have the depots that many people will prefer to use. And I think we need to find a way to heal this community and to develop a spirit of compromise. We've already passed the no harm clause and I think by putting a bit more legs to that no harm clause and indicating that the 7,800 tons can and will grow as the city grows uh, and that we will in good faith negotiate with Cosmo Industries. We can satisfy the requirements and, and quite frankly I, I strongly support the single stream bin system that is being offered by Loris but I believe we can have both in this city and that's therefore why I am moving this amendment so that we can have both, it is the Saskatoon way and we can get on with getting on with recycling. Thank you. Okay, okay now it has, Councillor Penner, did you have any comments on, the, on, on that at all because you were first to the, to the switch? Well, I'll, I'll simply say, I was going to ask some questions, Your Worship, but I think I'll, instead of doing that, just make a comment. Uh, it's always been my view, ever since November the 7th, when Council established the, the parameters for the RFP, that we were not in an issue of an either-or. 
Uh, we were in a situation where we were going to look at a kind of recycling, but we were not in any way excluding the value of Cosmo to our community. I believed that then, I believe it now. And what I, what I was going to say, I don't think I'll have to say it now again, that I would never ever do anything that would jeopardize Cosmo. And I have said that to all kinds of you in this room privately. And I don't think we are. I know we're not. There had been a contract that had been signed between the city and Cosmo guaranteeing 7,800 tons a long time ago. So that's there. And this RFP in no way jeopardizes that. With the motion that Councillor uh, Laurier, Laurier yes. excuse me, has put, it simply allows that to grow. And I can't see how that could be damaging. And so I'm going to support the amendment, Your Worship, and I'm going to support the motion as it was originally put forward by the administration. And while I'm on my feet, I want to thank the administration for the work they did in getting us to this point. Uh, because I know that there have been some in the community have, who have suggested that the administration did not handle this properly. The fact of the matter is they did. They handled it absolutely the way they were supposed to. And I want to commend them for that. It was council who determined what the RFP was going to be like. And what the administration was asked to do was carry it out. And they did. And I thank you for that. Okay. Councilor Lowen. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, sorry. Councilor Lowen. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I have a number of questions about the original uh, two recommendations, and now I have some about the third. Uh, and perhaps um, I will just ask, well, we can get to that in a minute. I, I do have some questions about the implementation, um, and I know we are still in the process of negotiating a contract, but as this news sort of trickled out into the community over the weekend, some of the, the kinds of questions I started to get were about how this would affect residents, and I have to say the most prevalent theme uh, was, will it be picked up on my street or in my alley? So I know we have talked about that in the past and we identified the sort of guiding principle that we would aim to have the recycling picked up where your garbage is picked up. I'm wondering if now is an appropriate time to ask for more detail about that now that we have identified a preferred proponent. What can you tell me about that item? Sure, Your Worship. Um, one of the strengths of the Loris Recycle proposal uh, did relate to um, participation and, and that service to customers. And one of the, uh, the components that they included in their submission was a recognition of how important it is to respect the, the, the debates that have happened within our community around the front street versus uh, rear lane collection. Um, they also showed a lot of sophistication of knowledge about our special services um, and how to coordinate their service delivery with our garbage service delivery. So uh, I'm quite confident that as we enter the negotiations phase that that is something that can be respected. Very good, and I think that will come uh, as very welcome news to many residents of Ward 7. Uh, having had uh, recent conversations about the garbage pickup, I think this is still on, on people's minds. And I think you just touched on my next, my next question, which is, there, it's not a large group, but there is a group of people within the community who receive assistance moving their smaller garbage bins uh, out for pickup because they have uh, mobility issues or limitations with moving their bins. I'm wondering uh, if for those small number of people who have that service from the city, something similar would be offered with the, uh, with the curbside recycling program. Uh, Your Worship, I, I have to admit that that is something that we would have to discuss as part of the negotiations. To be clear about the city's service, however, our special needs service is currently offered to 448 citizens uh, within the city, and it was offered as an interim measure um, for those who may have selected their home in a neighborhood mm -hmm. uh, that had a communal container they needed to only take a small garbage bag to versus the need to roll out a cart. And so. Um, we don't see that as being a long-term program and uh, whether we would require that of our contractors subject to the negotiation. Okay, and I recognize that we introduced that option uh, because we were making a change, but I would, I would uh, follow that this is also a pretty significant change and so for people who have those issues, I think it would be uh, wise for us to at least explore that opportunity with the proponent uh, because I think uh, that would 
ease the transition and um, certainly be much appreciated by that small number of people who do use that service. Um, just a third question about implementation. I note that the target date is January of 2013 and I know that we are still in the negotiations phase and you may not have this level of detail, but could you speak to um, Will everyone wake up with a bin on the same day or is this going to take weeks and months to be implemented as did our uh, transition to the smaller garbage cans? Your Worship, I think it's very fair to say that uh, Loris Recycle would have a similar uh, rollout uh, logistical issue to, to contend with as the city did in doing the conversion program. And so it would be something that would happen over a period of months. I also wanted to clarify that, uh, that January is um, is not meant to be necessarily interpreted as January, but that to reflect the fact that we are quite uh, doubtful that we would get a, pro a program up and running still in 2012 right. um, and that it would be in the new year. Yeah, that's, that's fair enough and I don't want you to have to commit to dates at this stage, but I think people are curious. For one, for one thing, people want to know, should I renew my subscription? And that's a question that we've been getting for months and so I think that'll be a question coming in the, in the weeks to come too, is when can I expect this to be implemented and what should I do with my existing subscription? So all of those technical questions aside, I'm wondering if perhaps the city clerk could reread the amendment because I didn't catch it all here and I want to make sure I understand what's being proposed. Your Worship, I'd be happy to and also um, Ms. Br Mrs. Bryant is going to put it up on the screen. Oh, we'll great. See that. So okay, well perhaps wait and I will wait to ask questions on the amendment until that's up and uh, we'll take it from there. Thank you. Councillor Hill. Uh, thank you, Worship. I don't know if the administration will be able to answer my questions until the amendment is up on the screen. It's quite a lengthy amendment. I'm just wondering what, um, if there are any implications or concerns with regards to cost or operations with this amendment as proposed or if we're okay to move it. Because we, we don't do anything outside of our budget cycle with regards to any operating costs. I just want to ensure that we're, we're not going to be doing something that we normally wouldn't do. Certainly I support the intent of the amendment. I was hoping actually Councillor Laurier's amendment was going to be something along the lines of an escalator clause actually for the 7,800 tons so that with the same percentage growth of the city so would that percentage growth be for Cosmo so that they would have the opportunity to grow because this council has been very clear from day one about the no harm to Cosmo clause. We've identified that with the guarantee of the 7,800 tons of paper so that they could still process the same paper and still generate the same revenue for their operations to provide the other programs that they do within their facilities. We've been very clear on that. Sadly, I don't think that maybe that has been communicated to the entire community, not only in our part, but on some of the other stakeholders' parts as well too. But this council has stated from day one we support COSMO, the quality programs that they provide. We have never said <coughs> that we didn't. We have always guaranteed that volume of paper for their operations. If this is going to help alleviate some of those concerns for the participants at COSMO and their families, most certainly I support it. The last thing we want are the COSMO participants going home and upset again because they are under the impression that their jobs are going to be removed. That is not what we want. We want to make sure that they have a sense of security and if this is going to provide that, certainly I can support that. I just want the administration to make sure that we're not doing anything out of our regular procedures here by approving this amendment. Mr. Totland. Uh, thanks, Your Worship. Just looking at it, I don't see anything that jumps out at me that would cause us any any real grievous concern. Uh, I mean, there's there's probably be some technicalities that we'd need to work through, but uh, you know, just reading it at its face, I, I think it's consistent with uh, with where we were headed with the program in any event. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, Councillor Dunhauer. Thank you, Your Worship. I just wanted to uh, <clears throat> speak briefly. To Councillor Laurie's amendment, I do support it. That's why I seconded it. Um, That's good. I would just, uh, <laughs> I would just like to recommend that we vote on the amendment first uh, before we vote on the other two recommendations. And I'd like to move that if possible. Okay. okay, we'll do that because it's an amendment to the motion. So we'll vote on the amendment first, then we'll vote so on. That's it. normal, presume. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Uh, next is Councillor Height. Yeah, just a, a question to. Uh, Mr. Jorgensen, because uh, uh, the the amendment stating to to start negotiations, what, when when is the city coming forward to put a recommendation in that we start 
mandatory payment to condo owners and multi-family owners because presently they're excluded. This includes them into the mandatory payment for, for recycling. When are you bringing that forward? Because this, if you don't bring that forward, this uh, motions mean non nothing. Your Worship, the, um, the, the, um, the way a municipality handles multi-unit dwellings doesn't have to be the same model and almost always isn't the same model as the single family uh, solution. For example, in Calgary, uh, I think their model is you, you don't, uh, we're, not gonna we're not going to force you to have a service, we're not going to tell you how to have your service, you just need, you need a service of some kind. You can't take your paper um, to the, you can't put your paper in the garbage, you, gotta, you, you need to have some kind of program in place to recycle. Um, a lot of uh, multi-unit dwellings in Calgary, for example, use uh, sub small contractors. So it's created a little industry unto its own and all the city did was say you need to have some kind of a service in place. So as far as timing of when we bring forward solutions, um, we'd always said that as part of these requests for proposals, we cast a net with the proponents. We wanted ideas from the proponents. We did get some ideas and, and some costs from the proponents. Um, it's not going to be immediately that we would bring forward the, the multi. We've, we've got a lot of work to do with Loris first uh, if, we give, if we're given direction tonight to get the, get the contract negotiated. But definitely 2012, like fall 2012 or late 2012, we will start bringing forward those ideas for you to consider when you're looking at multis. In the meantime, and indefinitely, we still have that contract with Cosmo and between all of the levers, all of the options we have to source the paper, we will get them the paper that they have. So even if you don't have that solution sorted out by the time we pull the trigger on, this, on the single families, um, we will ensure that steady stream of paper to Cosmo. Yeah, well, okay, th thanks, because what you're talking about in Calgary, they already have here in Saskatoon now, because a lot of the condo associations contract directly with Loris or other institutions, and I'm gonna, I don't know how you can go in there and, and all of a sudden yank that out and tell them what to do anything with it. And that's what, that's what this motion's all about. Deal, dealing with the Maltese and, and the condo owners. Is it not? Yeah, I, I understand, Your Worship, what Councillor Hyde is, is saying. Um, as I guess we haven't had a, any time to look, all, yeah, look into all the details of this uh, amendment, but I would think that um, the administration, for example, wouldn't have the right to make these broad sweeping changes. This is a policy level change. We would need to bring forward solutions to you with all of the implications. And uh, I, I, think, I think that that is something that is within council's right is to, is to implement some kind of a program with some restrictions. Okay, okay I, that's, that's answered my question because it won't be immediate, that's for sure. And uh, there's an awful lot of consultation and if you want to have an uproar and just go after the condo associations because they're quite happy with what they're doing today in most cases as I understand. All right. Uh, Councillor Lowen. Okay, thank you. Um, I guess before, before I ask a question about this, I, I, there was, there's one part of this discussion that I don't want to lose sight of which is that we had made um, an additional recommendation uh, I believe at our second last recycling discussion that we would form a committee with uh, industry and, um, and community organizations who work with people with intellectual disabilities to pursue opportunities in addition to what's already being done in the city within the recycling field. And I, I think it's become clear to me in the last few days that that's sort of fallen off the radar and so I'm wondering if there's an update on the progress of that recommendation, uh, if anything has happened or if we are waiting to commence work on that uh, until after this was awarded. Can someone in the administration comment on that? Uh, your Worship, um, in June of last year the administration was asked to consult with organizations serving people with intellectual disabilities in Saskatoon and to investigate employment and vocational opportunities for this community 
within the city's range of operations. Now, your administration's approach to this request includes the following steps. And while I go through these steps, I just want to say, Your Worship, that we are well underway with this task, but it's a very complex assignment and we're taking a, a comprehensive approach. And it's not something that I'm prepared to rush forward in order to come up with a quick solution. So the steps that we're taking is we are consulting with a broad spectrum of local organizations that serve and support people with disabilities. We're examining best practices among private and public employers. We're looking, we're trying to determine where the abilities of the target groups and the operational needs of the city have areas of mutual interest. And we're investigating a variety of potential work and vocational models including contracting work out to vocational workshops, contracting work out to groups that would perhaps come to work at a city job site, and continue to support individual employees in regular or amended uh, situations, job situations. But to conclude your worship, yes. Um, this endeavor is also being undertaken within the context of the city's existing vision and policy for diversity, which in summary is that our workforce, the city's workforce, will be representative of the entire community or the entire population of Saskatoon. That is our overarching vision. And uh, we expect to be reporting uh, to committee and council in due course, but again, I don't want to promise a quick resolution to this because it's very complex and we want to make sure we get it right. And I should, should also add that within the context of the, of the city's role in supporting the overall um, diversity of our community, we have many, while this particular employment um, uh, consideration has been uh, singled out here, this request is made, the city does, the city of, uh, administration and city council support the diversity community in many other ways in terms of grants and uh, abatement and our supportive housing program and so on and so forth. And so within that context, your worship, I say we are well underway in this endeavor and we will be reporting in due course. Thank you, Mr. Grower. That's good to hear, and uh, I look forward to hearing more about that. And certainly, I don't mean to imply that we should have, um, you know, we should know exactly what's going on. But I want to make sure that the, the public remains aware that that's something that we're working on concurrently with these other factors, because I think it is interesting and important uh, work. So, just with respect to this amendment, I want to ensure that I'm understanding this correctly, because it's kind of a lot to comprehend it. In, uh, in this context, is the implication that we would, um, the, the duration of this potential agreement coming out of a memorandum of understanding would commence as soon as the details are arranged and then would that run concurrently with a single family, like would this be until 2018? Uh, what are you envisioning in terms of the parameters of this arrangement? Uh, let Councillor Laurier speak to that because it's Councillor Laurier's right. motion. Yeah, um, my intent, and uh, I believe it's it's uh, it's an intention that that will be accepted by Cosmopolitan Industries, is that the terms life term of this contract applies equally to the contract that we have with the current contract we have with Cosmo and the contract that we will be negotiating with Loris. Both of them are running lockstep. It's, uh, it's about seven years left on the Cosmo contract and it would be a seven year term for the Loris contract. And while I'm on my feet, if I may, Your Worship, Councillor Height had uh, directed a question about the uh, multifamily residences that currently have contracts. Mm -hmm. I originally, in my original motion, had in place that it, the paper would be sourced from a combination of paper from multifamily residences not under contract with other waste haulers 
paper available at the existing depots and the city's own operationally generated recyclable waste paper when it becomes available because we obviously would have contracts with shredders and so forth. I decided to take out those two extra little clauses because I thought it just added too many words and confused it and I felt that we are in Saskatoon, this is all publicly recorded, this is something where we can go in a spirit of trust, faith and compromise and find a good way for the city, the taxpayers of Saskatoon, Loris and Cosmopolitan Industries. Uh, I can put all the words back in if you want, but I think that giving the administration the maximum flexibility to enter into negotiations and discussions with Cosmopolitan Industries is the best way to go. Okay. Councillor Law. Well, yeah, sorry, I'll, I'll wrap up quickly no, here, no, but I want to <laughs> ensure that I understand. No, you want to make sure that you understand what you Exactly. Want. We've come, we haven't debated this for, uh, for years just to, to move it along quickly, so I want to make sure that I understand what's being proposed. Um, so can you, I, you sort of alluded to this, uh, Mr. Jorgensen, or sorry, it was Mr. Totland, but to what extent is does this uh, sort of dovetail with our existing plan for multifamilies? Can you describe how this would be implemented? And in particular, I note that this amendment specifies that Cosmopolitan Industries would be the service provider for recyclables, not just paper. And I know we have an existing relationship with respect to paper, but not in terms of other recyclables. So I see that potentially being more complex than just paper, and I'm wondering if you can comment on that. Uh, thanks, Your Worship. I'll let Mr. Jorgensen also speak about it. When he was talking about multifamilies, I couldn't help but start thinking about what this, uh, what this says. And, and when I said it's consistent with what we were thinking, I mean, we're, we were planning to source our 7,800 tons from likely multis and our own recycling bins, perhaps our own, our own organization and other, uh, other large organizations. So that certainly is probably consistent. I think, and, and Councillor Laurie can correct me on this, but if I read that, correctly, that in essence is saying, well, we maybe don't know how we're going to collect this material necessarily. Cosmo would be the processor of the material. Of all the material yes. or of the that's, paper? That's what that says when I'm reading it now. Councillor Laurier can correct me on that, but that's, that's in essence what that says Okay. to me. Okay. Well, I certainly uh, understand and appreciate that um, we're continuing to make some efforts to uh, cooperate with COSMO and without question I have definitely heard from residents uh, that they're not wholly satisfied with the steps that have take, been taken thus far. Uh, I have to admit this is a lot to process at one time. I'm looking forward to hearing more conversation about this and I will I'm sure have some additional questions but it, it's, um, I appreciate the attempt that's being made here to, uh, to uh, try and work together increasingly in the field of recycling. So I'll look forward to further discussion on this and I may have further questions later. Pastor Lori. Thank you, Your Worship. And, and I apologize uh, to Council for bringing this on them, but uh, it seemed to me it was important that we find a way. In terms of recyclables, yes, I am very deliberately saying recyclables, not simply paper. Uh, in point of fact, if you look at what happens with many multifamily units, the amount of glass and tin is minuscule because if people put out, for instance, their wine bottles for recycling, they somehow disappear. So it is a low level of, of, of product that is likely there anyway, but uh, it just seemed to me that we should be including the whole ball of wax in this because that's what we're talking about. We want to encourage citizens to recycle all the material that can possibly be recycled. So instead of just calling it paper, let's look at what it really is, the recyclables. Councillor, I want to check, please. Thank you, Your Worship. I don't have questions. I have comments. Would you prefer I wait till after the speakers? If, it, if they're just comments, why don't we wait on comments? Otherwise, everyone's going to want to comment now, and then we won't 
have heard from the speakers yet. Councillor Hill. Uh, thank you, Worship. Uh, in Councillor Laurie's comment about wine bottles, I certainly am not putting mine out. Mine go to the scouts in the neighbourhood for their bottle drive. But that brings me to one of my questions in Councillor Height's um, comments about uh, multi-units that currently have programs. I just want to be sure that we're not saying that every single multi-unit needs to fall under this program because there are a lot of private sector business right now that rely on that source of revenue for their operations and we should not be kicking them out of that business by implementing this. But there are a number, a large number of multi-units that do not have programs. So if we can implement something and further enhance the programming at Cosmo, that's great. In Ward 1, for example, there are two complexes that work with local community associations that they process their recycling in return for the deposits that are, uh, that are off of the, the, the bottles and stuff that they take to Sarcan. So it's a great working relationship for them. And I don't want to take that away from the seniors to implement something new that they've already arranged with some of the Scouts and Girl Guides in their neighborhoods. So we have to be very careful that we're not kicking current operations out of their existing business and that we are just opening opportunity for those areas that are not currently recycling. Okay. I have a question for the administration and that question is to do with the new West partnership. If we don't sign this agreement before June the 30th, it's null and void because it leads back to the $25,000 maximum, is it not $25,000 that you can uh, award without going out to tender? Uh, Your Worship, you're, you're speaking of this, this uh, motion? Correct. Uh, you're, you're right, as of July 1st, I believe, uh, the New West Partnership, and we're only allowed to sole source, I believe, up to $75,000. And I think this is more than $75,000. This would likely I would, I would amount. I that would This be could the, amount to them more than that, yes. So, in other words, this is going to have to be dealt with at the very last council meeting in June. At the Otherwise, latest. at the latest, because if it's not, uh, the contract wouldn't be able to be honored because you would have to, in fact, uh, go to a tendering process then. So I, I think we're going to have to probably get those that, that a date put in there too for, for that. Councillor Laurier? Uh, Your Worship, I have spoken with representatives from the Cosmopolitan Industries Board about this very matter and uh, they tell me that they are prepared to uh, start the negotiations with the city as soon as possible and that they are prepared to enter into an agreement before July 1st. Okay, I just want everybody to know that, bef well that's here tonight because I don't want us to get down the road and it gets into August and someone says, well, you know what, that doesn't count anymore. So I just want everybody to have fair warning before we go any further. So there's urgency to this too. Okay. That being said, uh, we have four speakers this evening. And our first speaker will be Peter Gerard, please. If Your Honor, or Your Worship, I prefer to save my remarks till afterwards if I could, if this amendment passes and the motion passes, rather than speaking now. Highly unusual, the city clerk is saying that she doesn't believe that that's the formal way to go. It may not be the formal way to go, but I'd much rather express my appreciation after the motion is passed than, than to put comments on the floor before it's passed. Well, I, I, there's certainly validity to that. <laughs> and we certainly wouldn't want you to lose out on your opportunity of your only five minutes once this evening. No, I would like my, sec my five minutes or my two minutes afterwards rather than now, please, Your, your Worship. Okay, well, is there anyone that wishes to, there's four speakers. They are uh, Peter Gerard. Uh, where did my list go here right now? Ken Grischuk. Aaron Lors and Jim McClements. Do any four of them wish to speak before we vote on this or do they all wish to hold their peace and all speak after? No, all the entire no no you don't get to speak after the amendment. You gotta wait. You wait till the end. You don't you don't get to pick your poison. So I don't see Ken Grischuk, what did are you prepared? To wait till the end? I, I'm prepared. 
Okay. Okay. Aaron Lorse. I saw Aaron Lorse. Aaron. Okay. Jim McClements. Yes, Jim. There you are. Okay, but you don't get another turn then. Okay. All right. And you've been here before, so you know what the rules are. I finished early last time. And you don't get any credit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. As much as it pains you and me both, but five minutes is five minutes, okay? I'll get you in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I think this is uh, very well intentioned, but what I do want to talk about a little bit for a moment or two is the impact that this had and potentially still could have unless we find a sound solution that has been proposed here and it sounds to me like the Board of Cosmos is in favor of. Saskatoon City Council and the City have entered into a long-term collaborative agreement about something that's very important. It fits the purposes of Council, it fits the purposes of Cosmo Industries and that's the quality of life of folks with intellectual disabilities. It's been a long-term strong one. It's been torn apart over this last while. And I think it's unfortunate. And I want everyone to understand this, that this has been very devastating, not to me personally, because I have no conflict of interest on this, but the number of people who are here because they're concerned and upset. The quality of life is the primary function of Cosmo. It's named Cosmo Industries, so it's an appropriate label. But it is, in fact, a place that requires special training, special effort to make their quality of life very fine. And this long-term agreement has allowed this city to be a leader in this city, in this province, in this nation, and around the world on collaborative work and meaningful employment for people with intellectual disabilities. But what has been put at risk with this? Well, there are 18 people on the paper line. They ro rotate through three, six at a time. There's 100 other people at Cosmo who work in recycling in some fashion. And there's 400 people who are served by Cosmo Industries. And there are families for all those and all the staff. And I'd like to suggest that it affects everybody in this room. Every citizen of this city is dramatically affected by the opportunity that we provide. And we have to be careful with these solutions that they're not patronizing because our agreement hasn't been patronizing in the, f in the past. It's been collaborative. It's been supportive. It's been a common set of values. The very values and the purpose when I looked on the website of this council. And that's good government, sound fiscal management, and quality of life through three different levels. And I'm not going to go into those. Your worship and council as we move forward with this, and we're going to have to move forward quickly. I hope that we put at the front of any more, I gotta look up the RFPs in this area, the quality of life and the impact it has on these many good citizens, on the fine businessmen of, who've been on the Cosmo board and in other areas. I think this looks like, it looks like a good amendment, but it's caught me short, as it caught all of you short. I'm not sure what the ramifications are. I'm not sure that this can be delivered. But we need to put a lot of effort. We are the leaders in this area. I know your worship and I know many of the councillors who I talk to in the street are very proud of this relationship. Let's not lose it. Let's keep quality of life at the forefront of what this council does and what a Cosmo industry does. I think it was appropriate to speak now, not later, to convince you this is a good amendment. Okay, you could tell I was sitting on the fence. Please. I, I, I appreciate your support for the speaker, and I appreciate that you're in full support, the ones that are clapping in that. But if you could just allow us the opportunity to complete our works here this evening, that would be wonderful. And I know some of you may not have been here before, but uh, as much as we enjoy you applauding us, uh, as opposed to booing us, uh, we, uh, we, we would just prefer to be able to deal with the business at hand right now, but we thank you very much. Okay, that being said, the other three speakers, if memory serves me correct now, Peter Gerard, Ken Grischuk, and Aaron Lorris have all said that they are prepared to speak after the vote. 
So that's what we will do then. Councillor Dubois. Your Worship, I do have one other question, um, if I may. We're into questions, yeah. And it's in regards to the multifamily, and Councillor Hill alluded to it already, and I, because I've just been thinking that, you know, a lot of um, multifamily residences and condos and things, they already have recycling in place. It's part of their condo fees, and, and I'm wondering, I, I just, and I know, I don't even know if we have the answer to that tonight because this was just brought forward now, but really, realistically, how will that work? I mean, are we, will we be, we're not going to be able to go to them and say, your provider can't do this anymore or you can't do this anymore? I, I, and so how do we, find, how, how will, or, or community associations, uh, arrangements like he talked about, how, how do we see that emerging from this? Mr. Tolley? Well, Your Worship, I, I think Councillor Dubois hit it on the head. I don't think we know exactly what that is, um, you know, because I think certainly there are multi-sites out there that have their own arrangements in place, maybe contractually. That's maybe true. Some probably don't. Um, I don't think we were ever counting on, say, getting our entire 7,800 tons necessarily from multis. But, you know, I think that's the point of the, the motion is that we'll, we'll have some discussions about how we could potentially go about this. You know, one key point that council needs to remember in all this is that uh, when you, you know, and it, I guess it's kind of opportunity to talk about it tonight, we had the East Sector and one of our new neighborhoods before you tonight. Our new neighborhoods are being built on a 50-50 basis with multi-unit to single family. So we're creating mm -hmm. multi-unit sites in this city at a very accelerated rate, shall I say. A good point. So there's a lot of opportunity going forward for us as a city to, uh, to take advantage of multi-unit sites. Good. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Can't answer it all tonight, okay? I'm sorry. It's not, it, I, I don't even know a month from now if we could answer all of that, okay? Um, we haven't spoken to Cosmo, whatever, but I think this might be a step in the right direction. But anyway, we'll carry on here because Councillor Clark wanted to speak to you and to have some comments, or not comments, questions. Yeah, uh, just a question, I guess. Uh, it's the amendment is what we're focusing on. Uh, so will we then get a, rep I mean, it's, this is a real challenge that we're, we're both addressing a, a whole new area where the implications aren't clear and being told that it has to be sorted out within two and a half months. Um, so will we be getting a report quite quickly that will help us understand the implications? Uh, and I do want to clarify, so we are, and we're not necessarily saying that, that uh, this is a, uh, going to be all multifamilies. What we are saying is that we are committing, as we have, and as I've uh, have supported all the way to the 7,800 tons, and what I guess I can agree or understand about the value of this is that a lot of people have said, well, how is that going to happen? We don't think that it can necessarily happen. Um, and so I can see the need to sort of, okay, let's actually put it down. How are we going to do that? And whether or not this is going to require from Laura or someone. But I also, I do want to make sure that we're not uh, imposing a solution on some sectors without at least giving them a chance to hear about it or to know about it. Because in most cases like this, we would at least do some sort of a consultation to let people know that there's some changes happening. Um, so if, as long as that, there's some room for flexibility to say we're going to get a report on the 1700 tons. The multis are going to be, uh, that, you know, intention of looking at how we can use multis as, as, a, as a significant group for that, which I've thought always is one of the uh, options. But we're not, we're not by passing this tonight saying we're imposing solutions, but we're exploring and, and we're, and in the end we're going to come up with the 7800 at least. Uh, is that what we're saying? Because it's it may, mo mainly on the uh, the MOU is the one I'm sort of trying to get my head around. I think honest. it's uh, Councillor Laurier needs. I don't think it's fair for the administration to try to yeah. interpret Mr. what Councillor Laurier is wishing to intend to say. I don't not mean to put you on the spot, but Councillor Laurier, you were the one that did bring it forward. So I think it's fair that... I'd, I'd like to have I'll, I'll, I'll take a shot, Your Worship. I, I think the intent is for us to begin that discussion, as you said. And, I, you know, I, I don't know what this will end up looking like exactly, but I think the intent of the, the motion is, it, it's clear to me, uh, I think we need to have those discussions. And, you know, uh, by July 1st, I think we'd have to uh, come up with some understanding with Council and with Cosmo of what this would look like. Um, and, 
you know, we need to get started on that, I think, very quickly. And as far as seeking direction uh, from council, we would very much be seeking a lot of direction from city council. And this right. is a very sensitive issue. Um, I, I think council has a, a, a very keen interest in knowing what this looks like. So we would, in fact, be, see, you know, requesting some very clear direction and involvement of city council on this. I'd just like to also make one comment. There was a time when we've discussed trade agreements and people asked whether it's valid to have a debate about that and I remember taking some heat about that and I, I, do, I do note that here we are seeing that there is some impact of these trade agreements on municipal affairs and so uh, that's why I wanted to raise that back then. But uh, it, it certainly does create urgency, doesn't it? Councillor Laurier. I'm glad Councillor Clark got that shot in. <laughs> um, it is my intention in, in passing or, or in putting this amendment that the negotiations are going to be directed by council. Uh, we're not going to leave the administration out on their own kind of trying to interpret what it is we mean. But quite frankly, what we have to do is avoid an all-out war, which is what it looked like was going to be happening this weekend. All of us have had our email boxes uh, and, and our voice man manager stuffed full of uh, points of view, all of them legitimate, and they're all of them diametrically opposite. And it seemed to me that we can and we must in Saskatoon avoid having a war on this, because in a war, nobody wins, actually. So this motion is a little short on some details, and I'm, I, I, I applaud my fellow councillors for, for your uh, insight and wisdom in, in zeroing in on, on, on some of these things. Uh, but I think if we go forward in a spirit of compromise and in a good way, we can have uh, an end result that will allow uh, Cosmo to remain in the recycling industry as they have for years and years will allow Loris to do the very fine service that they are already providing for many thousands of Saskatoon citizens and will make sure that we are able to extend the lifetime of the landfill by creating uh, upwards of an 80% diversion rate. Okay. All right. Councillor Height. Just, just one more thing here. When I first read this, I, I, I was kind of excited, but really, for the life term of, the, of this contract, they've already got that. So what's this really doing? They're getting 7,800 tons. I thought the intent of this motion was to make it into perpetuity, in, in, to as long as Cosmo was there, that they would get 7,800 tons. Was that not the intent of the motion? Because they already got 7,800 tons for the term of this contract. What's the intent of the motion? Just for the life of the contract? Then they already got that. Uh, Flory. The intent of the motion is to make sure that the no harm clause is operationalized so that everybody knows what it means, what it entails, and to also make sure that we can grow this no harm clause as the city grows. Uh, and you'll notice that my wording says to provide no less than 7,800 tons. I didn't want to say to provide a whole lot more than 7,800 tons because we have to have these negotiations and these discussions. But this is the intent to, to see Cosmo continue its role in recycling and at the same time to ensure that single family homes have the ease and convenience of the rollout bins uh, that Loris is propo pr proposing to provide. They already, they already have that for the life of the contract, 7,800 tons. I will ask to her, the administration to answer that. Do they not get 7, guaranteed 7,800 tons for the life of the contract? Yeah. So what is this doing? Absolutely nothing. I thought it, when I first said it, I thought it was for, for ever, but this is only for the life of the contract. They've already got that. Uh, that's why I don't understand. You, you worship, I think the key is that this makes Cosmo the processor of, of that material, of the, those recyclables. That's the difference. Oh, ho, ho, ho. 
What don't solve their problems, Your Worship? Councillor Dunhauer. Thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, just I'm trying to help provide some clarification on this. <clears throat> Mr. Jorgensen, it's my understanding that the original recommendation, the original RFP, was sort of phase one of Saskatoon moving into recycling. Phase two was always intended to come forward and deal with multi family dwellings. Is that correct? Yes, Your Worship. Yeah. So there was a there there was uh, mandated to the administration a report to come up with a plan for multifamily units to participate in the recycling uh, it, program in Saskatoon, just like the residential plan we have before us tonight. Sorry, not just like, but in addition to um, that report was going to come forward and was going to explain how it was going to work, how it was going to pay for it. My understanding, and I, I'd like Council Laurie to clarify this for me, was that this deals with that. Correct. And it says that when that happens, Cosmopolitan Industries will be the processor of that paper. Correct. Is that correct, Councillor Laurie? Is that correct, Mr. Jorgensen? Yes, and I'm, I must admit, though, I'm hearing, I've heard it a couple of times, I've heard paper and I've heard recyclables. Sorry, I, I meant recyclables because that's what the motion said. My apologies. Thank you, Your Worship. I just wanted to clarify that. Okay. Uh, just before we get there, I think the other thing is, when we talk about the 7,800 tons uh, of paper there too, if the city is in fact going to, I think the one neighborhood's 51% residential, 49% multi, and if we grow at the rate that we're growing right now, over the next seven years, we should be able, they should be able to in fact do much better than that, they, theoretically speaking. And then there's the other ones, the other ones that are still to be picked up along the way that are not already in a system already. But we'll let the administration, but because I think the point that Cosmo is making here is they don't want to get stuck at 7,800. I think I haven't spoken to them, Councillor Laurie has, but I, my assumption is that they don't want to get stuck at 7,800 a year. They, they want to be able to have growth just like everyone else. Because if you don't have growth, you die. You've got to keep growing in order to sustain yourself too. So. Correct. Okay, that, that's correct. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm on the right. Okay, Councillor Lowen. Well, thank you. I uh, I just want to get a little bit of clarification from the administration on the next steps. I think I now have a better understanding of the intent of the motion, uh, but it, it occurs to me that we've spent a couple years talking about uh, single families and we're going to make most of the decisions about multifamilies in one evening. <laughs> and so there's a lot of detail here that we need to sort through and we need to do that from the sounds of it in a very uh, timely way. So could you please describe uh, the kinds of detail we might expect to see in the next report about this? Uh, I'm particularly curious about the financial implications of this decision and the operational implications um, and uh, and when we might be able to get that kind of detail because it, it is very complex as other councillors have mentioned there are already some players in this field and identifying those uh, areas where this service is required is probably going to be a feat unto itself and I don't want to make it sound like I don't think this is worthwhile to pursue because I do but I want to make sure that we know uh, how this is going to roll out and what kind of information we're going to have at our disposal in the, in the near future. Your Worship, um, we're going to need a, a bit of time just to digest what we've talked about tonight. Um, and I'm not sure exactly how much time it is. I, I, I think what would be key to this though is by the July 1st deadline that we're under, so to speak, uh, it would be important for us and Cosmo to have arrived at a understanding and agreement through an MOU or whatever it may be on the fact that they will be the processor of this material, perhaps without you know, all the, the details around how it's collected, where it's collected, and so forth. I think that the, the key to this would be to come to that agreement and understanding on the, the role Cosmo plays in that by July 1st. That would be my view of that, because I, to be frank, I think it's going to take us longer than July 1st to, to figure out all the details of what this process uh, will look like because I, I just don't have answers for you tonight. It's going to take a bit of time and for us to sort through this. 
fair enough, and I think it's uh, it's worth pursuing further discussions about this. But I'm very interested to see those details. I think it's important that we ensure that um, multifamily residences are going to get a, the same kind of service, and and their their service will be subject to the same careful preparation that the single family residents have now will presumably be the recipient of. And so I want to ensure that this process, even though we're under some constraints, is uh, thorough. So thank you, and I look forward to more uh, information. Councillor Hill. <clears throat> thank you, Your Worship. I just want to question again that you don't see any concerns as we move forward of impacting current businesses that are providing that service to multifamilies right now. Again, I really wish Councillor Laurier's motion would have simply been for an escalator clause to, to allow for the same growth of Cosmos tonnage along with the city growth, and then we could have worked out all those details afterwards, and then we would be within the CETA agreement that we've already agreed that we're going to provide this growth with this escalator clause. Councillor Heights identified it. They already have that guarantee of the 7,800 tons. This isn't providing any further um, support or, or anything for them except the fact that they're maybe now going to be in the processing of cans and plastics as well as the paper because this is saying they're going to be processing everything and I think their concerns are they want to be able to grow uh, as the city grows and if we just simply provided an escalator to the 7,800 tons of paper they would be given that opportunity to grow and then how we figure out what we're collecting on the on the multi units could help to find those solutions on how we, how we supplement that growth. So I, I just have some concerns on how this is going to play out and if we rush it, like Councillor Lowen's identified that, you know, we, I've been on council for five and a half years. I thought we were going to have recycling in the first year I was here. Obviously that didn't happen. And now we're going to be able to solve this problem in, the, in less than six months. I, I just have concerns of, of rushing this and not doing it right. Uh, Your Worship, I don't think we're suggesting we rush this. I think all we're saying is we would need a little time to just think through this, what this might look like, and obviously report back at that time. It's just, I, I really don't have a good answer for the question, uh, I, unless Brenda or Ms. Wallace or uh, Mr. Jorgensen have an idea of what the situation with existing multi-sites is. Um, I, I just couldn't tell you right now how many might have uh, services in place and how many we could uh, we could tap, so to speak, to uh, to provide this tonnage. Sure, Your Worship, if I may, um, we don't have a lot of information about the recycling contracts that uh, condominium associations or property managers may have. We do know, however, that all of the multi-unit dwelling um, condo associations or property managers need to arrange for their own garbage disposal collection and we, the City of Saskatoon is a player in that marketplace and we have about 70% of that collection market. That's really all the information that we have available to us today. So finding out what the nature of um, what those uh, organizations are doing for recyclables, um, whether they're informal or formal, is, is research we'd need to do. Okay. All right. Councillor Awanchuk, there are no other questions right now, so okay. comments. Thank you, Your Worship. I was just in case I was going to end with a question <laughs> after I made sure. my comments, I could address it either way. Um, I, I just have a few comments, and, and um, uh, I just want to say too to the administration that I, I believe that the process that you used to evaluate the RFP was, was above reproach, and I think that uh, you're to, to be commended for that. I think it was a difficult system uh, to deal with, and, and so my comments are not about that directly. Um, having said that, and I know that we're here to debate and to, to eventually vote on whether or not to accept this RFP, I, I have to take a couple of steps back and I want to talk about this mandatory system um, in general. And I, and I have to do that because um, I've been asked uh, rigorously by, by residents of my ward to, to be their voice and to speak to this issue for them tonight. And they have addressed concerns about mandatory recycling in general. Um, uh, part of the concern is, is the fee that's going to be imposed upon them. Part of it is not having room for a bin, uh, an extra bin in their yard. Another uh, concern that they have is that they already do recycling. A lot of them support Cosmo Industries. Some of them already have their, their mandate, or the opportunity to have a blue box system is already there, offered um, very successfully by the private sector. And so they don't see that it's a gain to have this as a mandatory system. So I guess having said that, the cost to not having a system 
is greater than the cost of having a system. If we, if we uh, continue to fill our landfill, that's going to be a, a bigger problem and we need to, to develop a new landfill. So I guess I'm in a bit of a conundrum about that uh, because I, I am told often loud and clear that they don't want this system. So I guess having said that, I'm, cons I'm wondering why we're calling it a mandatory system. You can't force somebody to recycle, just like we can't force somebody to take the bus, we can't force anybody to use the leisure facilities or to go golfing at our facilities, we just we can't force them to do that. I would rather see it called a service that's being offered. Uh, part of the problem, I think, is that we have made this a system that will be um, offered as a utility bill as opposed to our taxes, which, which happens with all of our other services as tax. Um, I had a call from a senior today and she's very concerned that if it hadn't been done this way and it had been a, a, a mill rate increase, which of course it would be because we're looking at 425 per household, that they would be able to utilize this in their, in their senior's tax deferral, which they can't do now. And so they're, they're upset about that. So I think there's some things that really haven't been handled well in this process. And one of them is calling it mandatory. I just, you know, I just really wish that we would stop using that word because, like I said, we can't we can't force anybody to do any of that. Um, so I guess that's my those are my concerns. I think that the system, though, to to uh, to address the RFP is above reproach. I don't see how, even though I'm concerned about the mandatory system being put in place, I don't see how I can vote against the recommendations because what we're voting on tonight is not whether or not to have a mandatory system or to have a recycling system, it's whether or not um, Laura should be the successful bidder. And I am really happy to see the amendment and I will certainly speak, or be voting in favour of the amendment um, because I was very concerned about what this would do to causal industries and I think this addresses it from what I've heard. Um, powers that be at Cosmo are, are satisfied with it and I have to commend Councillor Laurier for taking the time to do that because it has become a very decisive issue as well. So just those comments. Okay, Councillor Hike. Uh, is this the time for questions or are we going to have comments after we hear from the other speakers? No, no, we're going to vote. No, this is... On all, on all three? All yeah. three. Oh, oh, well then I'll, I'll make mine then and then that'll be it and I'll listen to the speakers. Uh, I, I, my, my comments uh, uh, clearly are that from day one I didn't think the mandatory system was the right way to go and I still don't and uh, a lot of the people in my ward believe I'm right and, and uh, uh, in fact it's only been reinforced the last while not only in my ward but some other ones as well. The, the no harm clause, that, 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 that to me is it for Cosmo? And I mean, I know what the amendment, to, what the intent is, but the reality of the world is, it's not going to come out as nice as, as it sounds in two months. I think we, we've wrestled with a lot of this for a lot of years. And uh, when you start moving into the condos and telling them that now the city's going to take over and you're going to do this and you're going to do that, and their budgets are met because they've got business arrangements, it's going to prove difficult. The amendment to me, if that was seven years was taken out of there, or the life of the agreement, and meant forever, I would support that because that's what we have to do. Then they can go home and they'd be happy. Let's don't send them home fooled on this. It's for seven years and they've already got seven years. They're not getting any more tonight. They got seven years. And I ask any of you that run a business, or have a business, or a non-profit corporation, I happen to be involved in two of those. Try and go to the banker when you've lost your best customer or your largest customer. Sure, it's down the road seven years. And try and get some operating money or capital money. And, you, and they, what they'll say to you is, get it to me in writing. What we're giving them in writing is well, you've got it for us for seven years and then it's going to be open to the to the marketplace again. That's an unfair burden to put on the volunteers at Cosmo Industries. And this is what's happening here and will happen. And we could talk all what we want, but that's the real world when you walk into a banker's office and borrow money. Who are your customers? And you've got your largest one and it's going to be gone in seven years. That's what this says. If the amendment says forever, that's fine. Then they have something they can go to the bank and say, yeah, we, we're guaranteed that. There's no guarantees here. There's not many guarantees in life. This is one we could have did and should do. 
I, I cannot support these. I, I, I do recycling. There's a lot of people that do recycling. And, and the, man, the thing, the calls that are saying, I've been recycling for 30 years. People are telling me, and now you're going to make me pay? I go away for six months, and you're going to make me pay? And then what, what, what I find really amazing about all of this is, is uh, when you're go and you tell somebody, we don't know how we're going to collect, we'll, we'll do the easy way, we'll throw it on the, on the utility bill and then if you don't pay it, they can walk in and they shut your water and if you happen to be in the electric, shut it all down, you haven't paid it. Instead of sending them a separate bill, because they know they sent them a separate bill, what would have happened? They wouldn't have paid it. There's so many things that, that I don't like about the and, and there's so many, and, and what we got today is working. I think that the lawyers who got this bid charging eight dollars a month and their business is growing every day. Cosmos is happy. And people that want to recycle, recycle. And we have options to do that. We don't get enough credit, City of Saskatoon, in my opinion, for the recycling that's been done. You know, when we go into the process we measured about who's got sustainability. Cosmos were the pioneers of recycling and they come out in the short end of the stick. That's business. But uh, for me, I'm not going to be supporting it for, for those reasons because, and the amendment to me is sugarcoating an issue that if we change the one word into, for, <coughs> extend it till they're in the business and I have no problem, then it has something that can do something for the organization. Okay. And until we do that, they got nothing tonight. Did you want to make that amendment? I'll move the amendment. We change the word, a friendly amendment. I don't know if it's a friendly one or a one that where it says the uh, glass we paved to cover for the for perpetuity uh, uh, of the uh, uh, of the. I wish I had it in front of me. My glasses here. Are, are, Well, I'll, I'll, I'll move then. Be it resolved that this entity. No, in a second here. Take out the word life and, uh, and add to the. Into the. Uh, I, I asked the uh, city solicitor for a word that would fit in there uh, that would be understandable. Instead of life for the life term, the life of Cosmo? I, you don't, I'm sorry, but you don't enter into contracts for the life of a... Of I'm a, sorry. Just as long as we're, we're doing, as long as we're in recycling? But that, you've never done that. The, you have a, the, a contract with Cosmo for 10 years. And if you're going to start talking about many, many years, you are changing the whole concept of what's there. It, there's nothing to stop future councils or the memor of, memorandum of understanding from going past that or having a specific term or whatever. But councils do not uh, enter into contracts for the life of a of an industry, I've never, Does I've never heard. Um, a memorandum of understanding is yeah, yeah. not your final contract. It's normally that you have agreed on some specific uh, things. It's a faster way of doing things, and and that you will, you have undertaken to then enter into the formal contract. It's not your turn. What to tell you the truth? What's concerning me is. When I read that, I now the way it is, I read it as good faith negotiating to see, to improve what we have now and to see how we can go forward together. The minute you start putting fixed terms and all that kind of stuff that when you have no idea how it's going to work or um, you have no idea of the cost to the city, you have like it just makes me very nervous. 
Well, I, I thank you for, for, for the, your, your comments. Uh, cost has actually been so far down on our uh, RFPs lately that I didn't think it was uh, really an issue. Uh, and, uh, but that being said then, uh, I, and I do understand when you can't tie uh, the future councillor's hands, but what you can do, those you can make them undo something that we put forward, and I don't think that's unreasonable to do. They want to do that. We have an opportunity to here to ex exceed past the seven-year life of the contract, and if somebody wants to undo that, they can do that, as the new council coming in in November can do. They can redo anything, I suppose, if you want, but the intent of it is, and I thought when I first read that, that it... That I think that's what everybody here, if you want, if you really truly want to no know harm to Cosmo, then I think we have to give them a whole lot more than seven year window to run their business. And, 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 and I just don't see no other way of doing that because they're on a, a, a slippery slope on that. So, you, you know, if, if the uh, in a city solicitor has grave concerns, um, then that's fine, uh, uh, but I still think uh, uh, the life term of the contract, that's what they have today, so really uh, uh, there, there's nothing more that I can add to that. So I, Talking to the city manager, we read the 7,800 tons as their guarantee for the life of this contract, but that the second part is you are expecting the city manager to come back with recommendations to you on involving cosmopolitan industries as the processor for recyclables in an ongoing way uh, regarding multifamily units. Which, which will look after past the seven years? Is there a way that we can insert that past well, the seven? That's the way we read it now. Oh, okay. So this will be in perpetuity. We read the seven years to be the 7,800 ton guarantee not the length of any contract that you might sign with them. So what, what, what uh, okay, so, 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 so your understanding then is that this goes on forever and ever then? No, no that, for seven years. No, that the city manager would come back after negotiation with a recommendation on a term regarding a uh, contract with Cosmopolitan Industries to be the service provider for recyclables. That's a normal thing. After negotiations, you come back with the term. Okay. Well, okay then. I, I got what you. Uh, if that's what the meaning is, then and uh, then the, the the true meaning of spirit of trust and comprehensive this will, will 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 bear out in 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 the report from the administration. Then, so I I will uh, listen to further, or we will get on with the vote. Uh, Madam City Clerk, you said you had your hands waving here. Your Worship, I was just wondering whether, I know from my perspective it would be a little bit easier, and I'm just going to put it out there, whether we separated them into two separate ones, and the first one, it would be number one, uh, regarding the 7,800 tons a annually uh, under the term of the contract, and then where that semicolon is, about four lines up, that then that be, and two, that the administration <coughs> report further by the end of June, um, regarding the entry into a, a, a MOU regarding that. I just wonder whether that helps the fact that they're separate okay. or whether it doesn't add anything uh, to uh, it. We'll ask <laughs> Councillor Laurie because it's her motion, not anyone else's. Well, it's my motion and a motion that has been endlessly discussed in various combinations and permutations all day with uh, very esteemed members of the Cosmopolitan Industries Board and that's why the, uh, the phrase life term of the contract is in there uh, because we do have an existing contract. I think if it makes more sense to have it a two-part motion, I will certainly uh, amend my amendment that it be a two-part motion, the not less than 7,800 tons for the balance of the contract, which implies that there is, as Councillor Hill wisely pointed out, an escalator clause. I wish you guys had all been with me when I was trying to offer a compromise today. I mean, I have to say you're all very brilliant in your suggestions, but I was out there on my own, so. 
Uh, and then secondly, that the second part would be, and the intention is that by no later than July 1st, we will discuss the intention of the city of Saskatoon entering into an MOU with Cosmopolitan Industries in order to be the service provider for recyclables generated from multifamily units as we can because we know there are certain impediments but we can look at the negatives all we want folks. The point is we've got to find a way to move forward as a city and that's what the intent of this motion is. That's why Cosmopolitan Industries was willing to extend an olive branch and I'm just suggesting now the city do the same thing. Uh, Councillor Laurie, I appreciate your July the 1st, but July the 1st doesn't work either. June 30th. No, I think what we should, what we need, no, what we need to say, earlier. we need to say earlier, I think it needs to be the first council meeting in June. <coughs> Because then, because then I don't have the schedule oh in no. front of me. Whenever the first yeah. meeting in June is, because yeah. if it comes back here and there's not consensus yet, we need to be able to do it and to, in fact, say to everyone, at the 11th hour on June the 30th, you're going to start negotiating this stuff and get down to the nitty gritty. It's too late. Yeah. Okay. So do you report back by June 18th? Okay. Okay. Well, if it's June, if it's June the 18th, it is then that we will have this settled. Okay, um, yes. Your Worship, the city manager was suggesting that the initial report come on May 28th. May and 20th. then that does give council that time to. I think that's even better. I'm glad to see he's moving so quickly already. <laughs> Councillor Penner, you had a comment. I just, no, Your Worship, I was just calling the question. You're calling the question. Okay, are there any other comments right now? I guess, in fact, what we're doing here tonight is attempting, I say attempting, to make sure that Cosmo Industries carries on as it has in the past. And we need to have this thing back here in May. We need to get this thing put to, to rest as quickly as possible. The people at Cosmo Industries, the people there have no idea what's going on tonight at all. I'm talking about the, 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 the people that are working inside the facility. Those people have no idea. They come, they come every day with a smile on their face. They think the world's great. The people that are here tonight are the people here that are concerned for them and want to make sure that they're looked after into the future. And so I appreciate what Councillor Laurie has done already uh, on her own. Um, talking with Cosmo Industries today, I am trustworthy and hopeful that we in fact are going to get to the final solution for, the, for Cosmo Industries. Uh, on this. I want us to make sure that this is a, a great program for them too. When I think about it, they are the originators of recycled newsprint. The finest newsprint in North America. The only newsprint that has been sought after when no one else would take newsprint, Saskatoon's Cosmo Industries were able to still sell theirs to five different mills in North America. I think they're doing a great job they are doing wonderful things in our community. I want them to be here forever. And I think that the people behind Cosmo Industries, the volunteers and the workforce are doing a phenomenal job. And so we're going to vote on this with the intention that we're going to be back here on May the 28th with no later than June the 18th having this all wrapped up so that there's no legal implications or anything else down the road. So the question is going to be called right now on the amendment, first of all, but there are two now. So I need the city clerk to read the first one because it was broken into two parts. And before we do that, I need to ask Councillor Donhauer if he's prepared to second that. Second change the two okay. All right. Your Worship, um, one, that the city honor its no new cost to cosmopolitan industry by continuing to provide no less than 70 tons of on-source black street paper annually, we're going to insert annually, uh, to Cosmopolitan Industries for the life term of this contract by entering into formal discussions and negotiations for such paper to be sourced as a combination of paper from multi-family residents, paper available at the existing depots, and the city's own operationally generated recyclable waste paper, and two, that the administration... Okay, well, why don't we just stop with that one first, okay? 
Let's vote. Let's vote because we'll get them both here. Okay. So it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, please show of hands. Okay, that carries. And two, that the administration report to City Council by May 28 regarding the entering into of a memorandum of understanding with Cosmopolitan Industries to be the service provider for recyclables generated from multifamily units. Okay. Councillor Clark. I just wonder, because of this uncertainty, if we change the word be the service provider to be a service provider, then at least we can no. have a little bit, well this is this question of are we going to go in and force uh, apartments and, and, uh, and I, know, I, I hate raising this at this point and I don't want to, I, I mean I really appreciate the intention of this but I also don't want us to pass something that we don't totally know the implications of and so, um, and I don't quite understand the impact of that word the in, in this case when I, when I look at it again. So I want to just make sure that we have a chance at least to go out to the business community and the, and the people who live in these and let, you know, let them know what we're thinking about at least before we just say, okay, without any discussion, consultation or anything, we've made this decision. Because I totally agree with the spirit of, of clarifying how are we going to get this 7,800 tons, making it much more tangible for people so that it's not a big question. I get all that, uh, but I, I just... I'm just still, I want to make sure that we're not uh, going somewhere that we, we uh, aren't clear on what we're doing here. Solomon? Well, Your Worship, I, I mean, Council can certainly do as Council wishes here, but I think this motion is clear. It, it is saying that, that Cosmo will be the processor of recyclables for um, material generated from multifamily use. I mean, that, if this motion passes, that's essentially what we're going to go out and start discussions with Cosmo on. So. Um, it wouldn't be talking to other processors, it would be whenever we come up with what this multi-program looks like, Cosmo will be in fact the processor of those materials. That's what this motion says. So with respect, I... Yeah, and just to, the solicitor just reminding me, I mean, the multi, for that to occur, we didn't, wouldn't necessarily need, we could enter into that, to that arrangement and understanding with Cosmo without necessarily having all the detail on what a program might look like. Because a program could actually follow what would be set up front is that Cosmo would be in fact the provider or the processor of that material. That's what this motion says. My interpretation. I've, I happily voted for the first half. I don't think we have enough information to actually make a decision. I'm, I don't have enough information to make a decision on the second half and so I, I'll have to vote against it because I, I just need to know a little bit more about that piece. Councillor Hill. Uh, thank you, Worship. So, Mr. Totler, are you telling me that this would be applicable to every multifamily or just those that currently don't have services? Uh, I'm not sure about that. We'd need to think a bit about that. Um. I would like that information before I vote on the motion. I'd also like some information on the cost associated with this, Councillor Laurie indicated that we might be the collectors currently for collecting at the depots, uh, it's about $195,000 a year in our operating budget. How do we know what this is going to cost? How can, how can we make this decision until we actually know we, all of the details? That, that's exactly my point, George. We don't know the details and what the collection would be. That motion's not speaking to that. My view, that motion is just speaking to that Cosmo would be the process or whatever, whatever we decide or how we decide to collect, uh, Cosmo would indeed be the process or we would need some time, as I said, to figure out how we would go about collecting this material. See, if they were the processor of just those units that currently don't have contracts or agreements with other members of the business community, I certainly could support it. But I can't support it if this means it's going to run those businesses out of business because we take all of that contract completely away from them. Yeah, and I don't think it necessarily means we're putting anybody out of business. Um, you know, again, we would, we would need to, to have a review. As Ms. Wallace said, we have about 70% of that multi-market today. Um, you know, this may be some sort of uh, phased approach that we enter into. I just don't have the detail on what that would look like. I think the principle is, is all I can go with at this point because that's, what the motion speaks to is the principle of Cosmo being the processor. 
Councillor Laurie, it was your motion again. I'm so sorry, I apologize. Uh, would it be helpful to Council if we inserted uh, the words uh, for multifamily residences not under contract with other waste haulers. Okay, so I will move that. It's, again, it is a, a go forward motion and uh, yes, there's lots of details to be worked out, but we can do it. All we have to do is decide that we're willing to do it or we can keep on fighting. I prefer the former rather than the latter. Councillor Penner. Well, thank you, Your Worship. I thought that we were dealing with what the administration told us earlier, that the next step in this process was to go to multi-unit or multi-residential. Yeah. And I wondered if it would help if we simply inserted the word sum between from and multi-family units. So in effect, what we'd be doing is dealing with those multi-family units that are not already under contract. So we put put the word sum in there because it doesn't mean we're going to do them all. And that's a very simple way to, I think, to open it up and yet still follow what the administration has said we were going to do as the next step. And if, if Council thinks that will work, I would suggest that Councillor Laurier add that as the friendly amendment and save the other words. Okay. Councillor Lowen. Well, I now need to seek some clarification um, on uh, some comments made by Mr. Totland, and perhaps I'm reading too much into this, but uh, when you said we would need to figure out how we would do the collections, is it, and perhaps this is a, actually a question for Councillor Laurier, is it the intent of the motion that we seek out a collector, which may or may not be the city itself, or is it the assumption that the collections would happen, would be conducted by the city? Uh, because that, I know we're speculating a lot here and we don't have any information available, but um, I'm wondering if perhaps we're actually committing ourselves to more than we thought we were. So I'd, I'd like clarification from whomever would like to do it. <laughs> I haven't spoken for a while, so I'll take a try. <laughs> Stretch your legs. Um, your Worship, the just kind of hearing the conversation, thinking thinking this through. At first I thought we're starting from ground zero and have to do a two-year process in two months. But I don't think we're near starting from ground zero because I have a proposal from Cosmo for recycling materials that they submitted as part of this process. They don't, it doesn't matter whether the recyclables came from uh, single family homes or multis, Recyclables are recyclables. There might be a bit of a characterization difference, you know, a higher percentage of one type of paper versus another, but we have a lot of detail about the kind of relationship that we could form with Cosmo. Now, whether, now this doesn't say we'll sort out how to, prov how to deliver, pick up and deliver the paper to Cosmo, the, or the recyclables to Cosmo. It just says we are entering into a contract with them for processing. So we don't have to have all... We don't have to have all the details of the program, the, the collection, the, you know, is it city collected or a tender or another RFP. Um, we can sort out just this one aspect and I think all we need to resolve is, is it a commingling, not for tonight, I'm not saying let's get another question on the table, but I think we need to resolve is it a commingled system or a, a dual stream system for multis. We can do some research on that and bring it forward. Uh, once you make that call, I think then we can go in very clearly with uh, uh, with, a co with an arrangement with Cosmo and bring that forward in, this, in the kind of timeline that we're talking about. So we don't have to have all of the all of the issues solved by the end of June, right? June the, 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 the one meeting in June. Um, I think we're actually well on our way already. That's good to keep in mind. I. But so, but before we move on, I just want to be clear, it's not the intent of the motion that we would commit ourselves by passing the motion to being the collector. No. Okay, that's all I needed, that's good. Osmo may not want the city to be the collector well, it, after this. Well, fair enough, I just don't, I don't uh, want to commit to any more steps of this process tonight than we need to, so I, uh, that's all I needed to clarify, thank you. Okay. Councilor Donahar. Thank you, Worship. Mr. Jorgensen, I'm sorry, 
we're actually, you're coming to us with a, a proposal for multis anyways, aren't you? And would that, like there keeps being all these questions about um, people who have existing recycling contracts, uh, sorry, condo associations and apartments. How would that factor into the proposal that would be coming from the administration if we just ignored this and put it on hold for a second? Well, it, <clears throat> my first thought is, you know, the first step is the city solicitor to see what kind of details we ha would need to have in place to clear the hurdle of having an appropriate contract in place before July 1st. That's one of the things I need to know, how far to go with details. Next step would be to, to start the discussion with Cosmopolitan Industries to see what their interests are. Sorry, and what can I interrupt are. for a second? Yeah. I think I got the wrong question communicated. Okay. I'm saying let's ignore this for a second, and I'm not talking about an agreement. Had this amendment not come forward tonight, your administration was going to bring to us a report on multis with a recommendation on what to do? Yes. Yes, you would that report have said something about people who, uh, condo associations that already had existing agreements? Absolutely. Okay, so this doesn't really change that. And this still gives you the flexibility to do what you were going to do? I agree. Yep. Right. Thank you. Question there. Councillor Hill. Uh, thank, thank you, you Worship. And if uh, Councillor uh, Laurier uh, will accept the uh, friendly suggestion from Councillor Penner about the insertion of the word sum, I am prepared to second that amendment. And then I would be comfortable moving forward with this and I would look forward to recommendations from Cosmo's board of directors because I see this merging and developing into something even more exciting and interesting for Cosmo that all of these multi-units then would have a choice for who would be their collectors. If Cosmo chose to create their own program in terms of collection and provide some other programming opportunities for their participants, that exists. So it's exciting to see that this also opens up some more doors for Cosmo and I'd like to have those discussions with them. So if Councillor Laurie is in favour of the insertion of the word sum, I will second that amendment. Yes, Madam City Clerk. You wish if I just need to confirm though, is that also keeping though the not included uh, not under contract with other waste dollars. No, so I think take that yeah. out. Okay. Uh, well, uh, hey, uh, before we call the question here, I, I need to he hear what this is then. Uh, with the intention of the city entering into a memorandum of understanding with Cosmo Industries to the service provider for recyclables generated from multifamily units. From some from multi. Uh, that the administration report to council by May 28th regarding the city entering into a memorandum of understanding with public policy industries to be the service provided for recycle level generated from some multifamily units. Question. I have a question for Mr. Tallman or Mr. Jorgensen on that. And the question is when you use the word sum there, what about all the new multi residentials? Do they become part of it or what does sum mean then? I prefer the way it is now. Um, if I'll, I'll reflect how we would interpret it if you inserted the word sum there, and that would be anybody not currently under contract. So that would be new growth or anybody not currently under contract. And I'm, I'm basing that on the discussion that I heard tonight. Okay. Okay. Did you want to add something else to that extent, Councillor Dubois? Worship, all I'm saying is, uh, some are saying that's what it says. Well, I guess. You know, someone could come in and read this, the word sum, they're not going to know what that means. So if we know what that means, let's put it in there and be as clear as... That, so instead of using the word sum, that you're saying that you generate it from all multi-family units that are not currently under contract. Right, and then I think we, uh, we wanted, we were talking about the new, I guess that does include the new, uh, new neighbourhoods as well. Do you have a problem with that? I, uh, no. No? Okay. Council of Laurie is being very accommodating tonight. Wow. <laughs> Don't say wow. Thank her. Thank you. <laughs> because it's not wow, it's wow. All right, you guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, uh, I want to make sure we get this right here because that's what, please, because this is exceedingly important. I know we may smile or chuckle, but we need to make sure we 
get the wording correct. Okay, Madam City Clerk, please. Um, I'm concerned that you are fixing your program in advance by saying that all new multifamily units would have cosmopolitan industries as the processor without a debate because you're cutting out all of the private sector. We just did that with Lors. Pardon? We just did that with Lors. They get all the new homes in the city. No, but that was after an RFP and a process. You don't know what you're going to do um, because you haven't had a process, you haven't had any debate on it. What if you changed it to with the intention of the city entering into a memorandum of understanding with Cosmopolitan to be the processor, because it's not just a service provider, I think, or you can leave that, that's up to you, for recyclables generated by a city program from multifamily units. And then whatever that city program is, yeah. okay. All right, then that's what we'll put in there. It might be all the new ones, it might be all the, it might okay. be anything. All right, I'll drink to that. Okay, yep. question. The city clerk, have you got this down? Okay, Madam City Clerk, can you read this off? It sounds like we have agreement here. Kind of a two, three-fisted thing here. Um, <clears throat> that the administration report to council by May 28 regarding the city entering into a memorandum of understanding um, with Cosmopolitan Industries to be the processor for, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, leave it as service provider, okay. Service provider. Service provider for recyclables generated by a city program from multifamily units. For multifamily. Okay. Okay. All right. So the question's been called. All those in favor? Show of hands, please. Okay, that carries. Okay, uh, Councillor, okay, now those amendments have been done. Do we want to move all four amendments together? Well, we have the two, two recommendations in the report, Your Worship, that we need to deal with. We I'll still need to, we st we've only dealt, all we've done so far is agree to include the recommendations. Three and four. Well, we've we've moved those and passed them. Now I'm going to move recommendation number one and recommendation well, only, number two. Only as amendments. So just say I move all four recommendations. Well, I'll move all four recommendations, Your Worship. Okay. We can do the other two twice. Okay. Okay. Question. All those in favor? Carries. All right. Now the speakers. Now the speakers. Just so. I hope, hopefully the speakers understand everything that has transpired this evening. What is, my understanding what has transpired this evening is that Loris will do residentials and that Cosmo Industries will be working with the city on the city's multi-residential program for the next seven years, is my understanding. Mr. Gerard, the floor is yours. Your Worship, Councillors. Uh, we've been through the pro pro process and I would agree I'd like to do some healing as well. I think one of the things we've demonstrated is that Cosmo provides a very cost effective service which was in question and that became very evident with the results of the RFP process. Uh, Pierre Trudeau visited our facility soon after it opened and one of the things that he said once was that everybody was created equally. We don't agree with that, that statement. But what we strive to do so, we wish that statement were true, but what we strive to do so at Cosmo is provide opportunities so that everybody has as big an opportunity, as large as they can, to be a part of the economic and social fabric of Saskatoon. The council res resolution tonight, we're very, we're happy and we're, we're working in good faith. We allow it, we appreciate the fact that it supports those uh, with a disability, we appreciate the fact that it allows them to grow with the city as the city grows too. Uh, we thank you for building this into your no harm, pos no harm to Cosmo policy. 
At this time, I would just like to thank, although they're not here, Waste Management and Terra for having the faith to uh, bid with us in the RFP process. Uh, maybe part of the committee which uh, the city is working on with regards to the mandate to provide sort of, uh, sort of opportunities for those with disabilities, possibly what it might work on is to develop policies around preferred contract awarding practices uh, that council could uh, commit to making in good faith with respect to those individuals. Uh, no, we're most appreciative. We will work as rapidly as we can with uh, Mr. Jorgensen and Mr. Totland to sort of bring forth those recommendations by May 28th. And with that, I would like to thank you and all the, our supporters through this uh, process. And with that, what I would like to do, or I'll, I'll do it on my time. You'll do it your time. Well, thank you very much for those work for allowing me. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Uh, Grischuk is next. Help me find this, right? That five minutes is going pretty quick here. You know? I know, I know. But look at it this way: I have a three-minute presentation rather than a five-minute speech. You're getting off by two minutes. Whatever you think. I'm glad to see you're so confident in us. What I'd like to do in the next three minutes is to play something which is um, about Cosmo and about the people you just helped tonight and all of the people that were behind the uh, sheepdogs put this together.
That, that song was written by Paul Runnels. He's a teacher in Saskatoon. The Fireside Singers are in there and a whole bunch of local uh, uh, talented musicians. And we would like to thank from Cosmo for all of you for being paper angels for us, for supporting us in our recycling. And I have a car sticker for you or wherever you'd like to put it. We certainly hope that it, your worship that you will uh, put it on your vehicle and that all councillors will display it proudly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Aaron Morris, please. Thank you, Your Worship. In, in light of the events that have uh, transpired tonight, uh, I'm, I have no comments. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. That being said, uh, we can now move on. If I don't know if th this item, this item on the agenda is now complete. I don't know if you wish to leave or not. If you do, uh, this would be an appropriate time, and we'll just wait a minute while you exit. Okay, uh, it sounds like the gallery has emptied sufficiently for us to carry on. Uh, we still have two more speakers to deal with this evening. In the meantime, uh, we have items which require the direction of City Council. The first item is on the poultry challenge and uh, the recommendation is that information be received. Moved by Councilor Prince, second by Councilor DeBall. All those in favor, that carries. Next is submitting revised 2012 membership invoice. This is for the City of Saskatoon. This is a, a bill that we have to pay. Who wants to move that? Councillor Dunhar wanted to spend the money tonight. Okay. Second by Councillor Wanchuk. All those in favor, that carries. Next is for our Canada Day celebrations. We have two or uh, three through ten. Moved and second. I'm moved by Councillor Paulson. Second by Councillor Dubois. All those in favor, that carries. And then 11 and 12, and Councillor Dubois agrees too, so that all those in favor, that carries. 
Items which have been refer referred for appropriate action, there are 22 of them. Who dare? Moved by Councillor Dubois, second by Councillor Dunhauer. Councillor. No. Do you want a second? We have to have a second before we have a question. Do you have a second? Okay, then you can have a question. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry, Councillor Dubois, did you move them all? Is yeah, all 22. Okay, great. I just have a question about number six. Uh, the letter that we received regarding public accounts. Uh, is that letter factual and how does that work and how do we report that to Revenue Canada and that sort of thing or is that uh I'll respond to that, you, uh, okay. your worship, if that's You can call right. me your worship if you want. <laughs> um, uh, Ms. Blansky actually has responded to the writer, but I can advise that the one individual the, that works for the Depart for uh, utility services didn't qualify to be put into the public accounts because she had only been hired within a few months of the um, end of the year, so she didn't meet the $50,000 threshold. And so, and the other uh, are police um, employees. And what we are doing is, uh, I've been in touch with all the payroll coordinators throughout the city to try to get a handle, because this was actually new to me. I, I didn't realize that this, and what it, I think what it's mostly happening is with women who, upon their marriage, their name is legally changed, but they keep uh, sort of keep their name that they were commonly known as, right. and of course the public accounts are based on the um, uh, the legal name, and so we're getting a handle on that, and hopefully it will be just a small number, and we'll be able to do some kind of cross referencing, whether it's even just well, just a, some kind of cross referencing. But did and, and Ms. Volansky did assure the writer that there was no intent. Uh, at all to deceive anybody, and and actually he, the writer did know had been told about that one employee and chose not to. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, the only other one is number 16, the power outages in Confederation Park area. We don't own that. Yeah. That's SAS power, just so that everyone understands that. So it moved and seconded. All those in favor? Carries. We have three proclamations tonight. Moved by Councilor Parrish, by Councilor Dunhauer. All those in favor? That carries. The uh, next item for this evening, uh, question and answer period. Are there any, qu oh, Councillor Dunhauer, question and answer period? Yes, sir. Think? Yeah, um, are you going to yeah. we're not the committee, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, just have a question for the administration regarding the Metro news boxes that came out. Uh, there was a little bit of a stir right when it happened and uh, we had asked for an update on what's happening with that and I'm just wondering if we have any updates to report on uh, the assignment of those boxes and whether things have settled down a little bit. There's some constituents waiting to hear back from me and I'd just like to know what to tell them. Originally, some were not put when they were supposed to and we were negotiating and that sort of thing. Um, Your Worship, yeah, the uh, t uh, 500 were applied for, two 270 were put in. It is a bit of an iterative process okay. uh, with ones that uh, have trouble. I'd have to get to the exact details on how many we have outstanding that have not been uh, Resolved, but I believe it, it has uh, uh, improved from the okay. rollout. So it's gotten better, and we're working on resolving the rest of them. Great, thank yeah, you. All I can tell you is that I've spoken to Mr. Schrout about this, and uh, he was very pleased with our administrative staff on how they were helping him along the way to get to where he needs to be, and hopefully there'll be more work on this so that we can get them out there for them. Thank you. They have to pay them, by the way, just so you know. Yeah, Councillor Hill. Uh, thank you, Worship. Councillor uh, Donauer asked uh, part of my question with regards to Metro News. I just wanted to um, <coughs> comment that it's great that uh, we have a, another newspaper uh, exhibiting confidence in the city of Saskatoon and investing their operations in here. And I understand the report that we did get, Mr. Gutek, from um, Gord Humphrey. Uh, he provided us with a copy of the existing bylaw and the agreement that uh, Metro did sign with a number of locations and certainly I, I understand that our bylaws and procedures were followed but am I correct in understanding that the last review of this policy was June of 2000? Uh, that's correct. This is a city council policy that was enacted in June of 2000. Okay. Now the policy has some, some components where when they're in a, a bid area, they have to speak directly with the bid with regards to the placement of the bids, and that's great. But there's nothing in the policy for the residential areas in terms of consultation with uh, local community associations. Is that correct? No. Only when the box goes um, uh, behind the... Uh, 
sidewalk in front of a private residence. They do have to have the written consent of ourselves as administration and the, and the property owner. Okay, so that, that, that's my concern because this, this policy is 12 years old and are our rates, you know, current with what the market rates are for newspaper box placement? Should we be reviewing some of the residential placements? Because that's primarily the, the only concerns I've heard have been the residential placement of the boxes and some of the concerns with regards to litter and graffiti. So what do you require from me? Do you need a formal inquiry to activate a review of this policy? Um, it would, it's very easy. Yeah, just give me a, a, a one-liner to uh, bring, bring this to uh, executive with status and recommendations. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, I see no more questions, therefore no more answers. Matters of particular interest, we've dealt with quite a few of them this evening. Are there any inquiries this evening? Councillor Clark. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, my inquiry is, uh, would the administration please report to City Council on possible changes to the zoning bylaw to establish reasonable limits for the amount of time a shipping container used, being used for construction can remain on a property. The current wording ties the shipping container permits to the building permit and there's no time limit on building permits, so shipping containers can remain in neighborhoods indefinitely. Okay, Councillor Hill. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, would the administration please provide a status report on newspaper vending machine policy? Please include uh, details on rates and consultation with residential neighborhoods. Councillor Paulson. Could the administration please report on the possibility of creating a food truck policy? Amongst their, uh, other things, if the administration is going to create a policy allowing for food trucks, please consider not allowing trucks to park in residential areas overnight. Learning from previous experience, most cities welcome diversity in food choices in commercial areas. However, residential areas do not welcome these trucks being parked in front of their homes each night. Thank you. Okay. Uh, that concludes inquiries for this evening. Motions? There are none this evening. Giving notice. Is anyone giving notice this evening? I see no one giving notice this evening. The next item are the um, bylaws. Uh, Councillor Clark, please. Your 901417 and 18. 1914 through 1918. 1415, 16, 17, and 18. I move Nine zero. Yes, 901408 through 9018. Seconded by Councillor Clark. All those in favor, that carries. I move second reading. Favor. Seconded by Councillor Paulson. All those in favor, carries. I move the Council Building Committee. Seconded by Councillor Laurie. All those in favor, carries. Move the committee rise. Agreed. Carries. I move adoption of the committee's report. Seconded by Councillor Lowe. And all those in favor, that carries. I move permission for third reading. Second by Councillor Height. All those in favor? This must be unanimous. Yes, you get. Okay, that carries. And I move third reading. Second right. by Councillor Dubois. All those in favor? And that carries. Our next item this evening are communications to Council. Our first, our, our speakers right now will be Marion uh, Mutala, I hope, and Wes Funk. Yes, uh, apologies to Wes, he had to leave. Uh, he did? Yes, he oh, was okay. here, though. Okay. And that. I think you 